welcome everyone to the official launch of the Biola University Institutional Diversity Strategic Plan. You know, we praise God for the work he has done and is continuing to do on our campus. And I want to thank you for joining us for this historic event. At the end of today's time, we will partake in communion together. And we invite you, wherever you are, to participate with us. We will begin with a word from our board vice chair, Brad Cole, followed by our board chair, Mike Maples. Hello, Biola. My name is Brad Cole. I'm an alum of the university and have served on the Board of Trustees since 2002, and I'm currently the Vice Chair. My wife, Christy, as well as my daughters are alums, as well as my father. I care deeply about Biola. We live in a diverse world, as we all know, and are called to engage our world for Christ in a winsome way. The Kingdom of God is not like any one of us individually. Having spent my professional career in life science companies in the San Francisco Bay Area, I live and work in a diverse world, the company I most recently helped lead had 30 different languages spoken in our halls. I expect the Biola community to reflect some of the same diversity and be able through our mission to impact all people for Jesus Christ. We can't realize our mission if we are not diverse in many ways, including thought, ethnicity, socio and economic backgrounds, and faculty and leadership makeup. Not just reflecting diversity in our student body, but in our whole community. Biblical diversity and our commitment to unity within diversity is key to living in a Christ-like community. I have traveled the world on business, and the world certainly is not just like the U.S. My own family reflects the world with grandchildren from Ethiopia and China. And should they choose to attend Biola, as have three generations of my family? I want each of them to be welcomed at Biola thrive at Biola and have their sense of calling enhanced and confirmed by their Biola experience, launching them into a lifetime of kingdom service in whatever they endeavor they choose to follow. Don't we all have that same hope for our students? In many ways, we are doing a great job, but we need to improve, especially for students of color and students whose backgrounds differ from our own. A right relationship with God results in us relating well to our brothers and sisters who are different than us. Biola provides a place for our faculty and students to learn and practice before going into the world to influence, influence others to live in this Christ-like way. I cannot be more excited and convinced that Biola is on the best path to doing important work in this area that propels us forward to greater relational and missional impact than ever before. You have the full support and blessing of the board as you pursue this high goal. My name is Michael Maples and I have the honor to serve as the chairman of the board of trustees of Biola University. It's such an honor to serve you, the staff, the faculty and students of Biola on this great mission that we're on. Brad, thank you for your words that express so well the need for this diversity strategic plan and the board's desire and full support of the plan. But we need more than that, don't we? We need the power of God. We need the Holy Spirit to take well thought through words on a page and make them reality. We need ideas and aspirations to become a movement. So join me as we pray together and ask God to empower us on this journey we're on. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you with big ambitions to create a place where the beauty of the diversity that you have created can be experienced. Father, we're living in a world that is marked by brokenness and misunderstanding and at times hatred. We pray that you will create at Biola an environment that gives us a taste of your kingdom with all the richness of the diversity that you've created. That in the halls and the classrooms and the sports arena of Biola, authentic biblical worldview will be learned and lived out and experienced. That your Holy Spirit will shape, transform and empower our faculty and staff and trustees and students to be authentic biblical followers of Jesus that you've called us to be that you would pull forward the scenes in Revelation where we gather to worship as a community that is uniquely diverse and fully unified, that we'd experience your kingdom here in such a powerful way that we naturally and enthusiastically want to expand your kingdom, that in the weeks and the years and the decades to come, people will move from Biola and live out your kingdom in a manner that brings healing and hope in conversations and relationships in workplaces in churches and even in politics father we need your spirit to continually blow across this campus 
and help us to be what you've called us to be, but what we cannot be on our own. Father, may your kingdom be taught and experienced in such a powerful way that all who come through these doors are transformed and empowered to expand your kingdom in the world in which we live. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you, board leadership, Brad Cole and Mike Maples. For those within the Biola community who I have not had the pleasure to meet, my name is Tamara Malone, and I thank God for the honor of serving as the Chief Diversity Officer here at Biola. It's in this role I have the opportunity to collaborate with senior leaders from across the university to develop and implement the vision for unity amidst diversity. Our theme for this launch of the Institutional Diversity Strategic Plan, or IDSP, is unity amidst diversity, past, present, and future. As we live out our mission statement of biblically-centered education, scholarship, and service, equipping men and women and mind and character to impact the world for the Lord Jesus Christ and reflect on the words of Biola's founder, Lyman Stewart, we must take intentional steps to implement this vital work within our community as we seek to reflect the breadth and the depth of the diverse yet unified body of Christ. So some may ask, does this mean Biola is changing? Well, the answer is yes and no. The Apostle Paul reminds us in the book of Ephesians that while we're already diverse yet unified through the sacrifice of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, we must still make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. As each part of the body contributes to its unique God-given way to the rest of the body, we grow as a body until all of us come to unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity to measure the full statue of Christ. Growth and maturity in Christ requires change. And while we must remain rooted in our unchanging foundation in Christ, Paul also instructs us that we must grow in every way into him who is the head, and that is Christ. Therefore, let us commit ourselves to striving together toward maturity, growing together in the fullness of Christ and remaining anchored in our unchanging Lord. Now, we may continue to strive to live out our university mission. We do so with the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit. So today, you will hear from University Cabinet, as well as leaders from the Diversity and Inclusion Team and Talbot School of Theology. We all represent a greater Biola community, which is committed to living out our unity amidst diversity. Today, we will reflect on where we have been as an institution, where we are in the present, and where we look to be in the future, which includes highlighting our institutional diversity strategic plan, a historic achievement for our campus as it provides a roadmap for the years to come. Throughout scripture, we see remembrance playing a key role in the growth and development of believers. Reflecting on the past helps us to acknowledge where we have come from, the good and the challenging and reminds us the work that has already been done and the shoulders that we stand on as we seek to move toward the future. And now, our university president, Dr. Barry Corey, will reflect briefly on Biola's history as it relates to diversity. So greetings again to all of you in the name of our triune God, three in one. And that statement itself is amazing. Diversity and unity begin with our understanding of the Trinity. One God exists as three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And just as the triune God reveals diversity in his eternal unity, so also his created humanity is meant to reflect diversity and unity. And today is a day of celebration at Biola. We've come a long way to get to where we are, starting and committed to a biblical foundation in our approach to diversity. And though we've come far, yet we still have much farther to go. We'll not fully understand complete unity in the beauty of our diversity until we see it in heaven. And then I think we'll wonder why we didn't do this better here on earth. The idea of a reconciling community started when Biola started, founded to be a welcoming Christian institution. The founders really wanted Biola to be a place where no people or groups would be preferred over others. 
Said another way, Bible was rooted in a tradition of justice and reconciliation from God's word well before it was in vogue. Our founder, Lyman Stewart, said of Biola in his 1913 Cornerstone Address, all people, without reference to race, color, class, creed, or previous condition, will ever be welcome to its privileges. And the word welcome would not be linked to the color of one's skin or to someone's ethnic background or denominational affiliation or socioeconomic status nor the uniqueness of their story. All would be welcome to Biola's privileges. The community called Biola needed to be a gathering place without prejudice, a place of reconciliation to one another as those reconciled by Christ. But we didn't always get it right. There were times when Biola's leaders said or did things that were not consistent with those founding words. We've had some leaders who made regrettable comments, who wrote words that were hurtful and untrue and who did not stand up for the hurting and oppressed in ways that they should have. We've also had times when we've had to talk about our shortcomings. Even in the 1990s with a reconciliation time when we addressed some things said in the 1930s. Racially hurtful words by leaders who said and wrote things that we needed to reckon with. And conversations ensued and papers were written from a biblical perspective to correct the wrongs from decades earlier. You know, we need to continue reminding ourselves as Christians that the church did not always get it right. Though many Christians were living biblically as they fought for the end of slavery or for the elimination of Jim Crow laws, or standing with their black brothers and sisters in civil rights marches, or speaking out against Japanese internment camps in World War II. Others were silent, or, or watching from a safe distance as injustice happened not too far from their own communities. When Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. said he longed to live in a nation where all people would not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. We need to keep living into those words at Biola. You know, the Bible is clear, right? There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Jesus Christ. And this must be our approach. No one person, no one group more important than the other. We don't suppress a person or group to lift another up. We're all huddled together at the foot of the cross, sinners saved by grace who love Jesus and love our neighbor. So we keep lifting each other up, and we've got more work to do. Our retention rates, frankly, have not been great or consistent for students of diverse backgrounds, and, and, and we own this. The stories I hear from some students is that they, they want to walk away from Biola or just hang on rather than stay. We have those at Biola who have been hurt by others in our community and who, who carry burdens of wounds and pain. I also hear from many students from diverse cultural backgrounds about their love for this community and how they have thrived and flourished here in ways that, that far exceeded their expectations. But I want this story to be told for all students, not for like almost all students. And to get there, we're going to press on. Press on in hard conversations, in honest conversations. And we've had more and more of those recently. And, and they're not always easy, but they're honest. And I'm open to these conversations because they're about truth set in love, about making Biola better and stronger and a more encouraging place to be. And just as God through Christ welcomed us into his family, so we through Christ welcome one another into our Biola community. You have been reconciled with Christ, so be reconciled to each other. Or as Paul says, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. I actually think that these conversations are part of what it means to be ministers of reconciliation. What our founders had in mind, what they would expect of us today. We live intentionally into a Christian community especially with our increasing ethnic and cultural diversity. And we do this by, by practicing confession and forgiveness, 
attempting to live into reconciled relationships and accepting the responsibility for how students are welcomed, or if not, how, how to fix it. And that means we submit not to power groups or ideological systems, but to biblical instruction on living into unity amidst our diversity. For the past few years, the university's leadership, the board of trustees, have, have given increased attention to how we are a community that thinks and acts biblically on diversity, truly caring about one another, welcoming students from diverse backgrounds, and, and nurturing a climate that is welcoming for all. We've come a long way, but we're committed to keep on going. And I've been thinking about diversity at Biola, especially cultural and ethnic diversity. And I've, as I have, I've, I've tried to communicate that, that humbly hearing one another's concerns is the best way to pursue unity and the peace of the university. You know, we're all on the same team. In reality, we are the body of Christ. Thus, we are bound together as one. And what impacts one impacts all. This is why we have facilitators on our campus to help us in these conversations about living Christianly into community reconciliation. And we have a long history of people here that worked in, in tilling the soil. And many of the things they did have so helped us. And some have done this as part of their ministry of reconciliation and some of them with formal roles. I think about Dr. George Moore. He was a Bible professor in the 1970s and 80s, and he also served as director of minority affairs. He was a recruiter and mentor to students of color and worked tirelessly to help Biola's campus reflect the diversity of God's kingdom, starting, which still goes on today, the Hispanic Pastors Conference and, and the Gospel Choir. I think about Dr. Glenn Kenosha, the founder and director of multi-ethnic programs and development starting in 1994, who established Reconciliation Chapels, the Lead Scholars Program, and the SCORE Conference celebrating this, its 25th anniversary year. Or Dr. Pete Harris, who is our first senior leader of diversity initiatives as associate provost for diversity leadership from 2004 to 2011. He led the diversity leadership committee, collaborated to produce the theological imperative on diversity paper and led community-wide engagement around the Jesus mural. Dr. Jerithro Quinn served as vice provost for multi-ethnic and cross-cultural engagement from 2011 to 2014, leading efforts to establish our Mosaic Cultural Center and the Center for Cross-Cultural Engagement, formed the Multi-Ethnic Parent Advisory Board and the Multi-Ethnic Leaders Advisory Board and composed of local pastors and leaders from diverse communities, Dr. Pamela Christian, followed as Vice Provost for Inclusion and Cross-Cultural Engagement, having Dr. Kenosha to lead Imago Day initiatives and began gathering faculty of color. She assigned Tamara Malone to lead student initiatives, which birthed the current student enrichment and intercultural development seed department and hired Dr. Walter Augustine as the director of the M-A-L-E-S, Males Initiative, and Multi-Ethnic Church Relations. And this brings me to Tamara Malone, who is such a healthy leader for us today. So thank you, Tamara, longtime beloved member of this community. She worked to, to spearhead our theological statement called Unity Amidst Diversity, done in part with Talbot faculty and members of her team. And our board of trustees unanimously approved this statement two years ago and it is our foundation. And we're so grateful to our sovereign God for bringing so many to serve Biola with the biblical mission of living out the diversity that God created so beautifully. It is because of them that we have the growth and momentum today that we do. We stand on their shoulders. That's why our institutional diversity strategic plan, which is basically a community reconciliation plan, this plan still in its development is so important. It's grounded in scripture and it affirms all in this community without imposing guilt techniques on others or, or canceling voices. It's, it's meant to be uplifting and Christ exalting and we need it. And I am proud of Tamara Malone and her team for the work that they've done on this. And what is good is that we can all be a part of these conversations. They're not just for those who 
quote unquote care about diversity or about the choir members listening to those we're preaching to. I welcome you to these conversations. Next, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Deborah Taylor, our Provost and Senior Vice President, who will share about what is currently being accomplished by those who are helping to lead these efforts. In 2017, I asked Tamara Malone to serve as our Chief Diversity Officer, and it was one of the best decisions I have made. It is under her leadership that the current team and vision for diversity and inclusion was established. As a Christian institution within higher education, we recognize that diversity is key to living out who we are and who we are striving to be. A critical part of Tamara's vision is to ensure that when we talk about diversity, it reaches beyond race and ethnicity to cultural values, socioeconomic status, sex, visible and invisible disabilities, age, native language, church denomination, and so much more. So as you listen to what is currently being accomplished and what we are striving for, attune your ears to hear about the breadth of diversity that God created in all its dimensions. Hello, I'm Malika Consultado, and I serve as the Director for Student Enrichment and Intercultural Development, or SEED. And I'm Lester Larios, and serve as the Assistant Director of SEED. Our department mission is to enhance the academic success and personal development of students from diverse backgrounds through holistic support. We offer a wide array of programming and services for our community, ranging from first-generation college student programming and the Biola Shares Food Pantry and Lending Library, as well as intercultural development programs such as lead scholars in our eight seed affinity groups. All in all, SEED exists to support students holistically in their development, connect them to resources, and provide educational opportunities to equip students as individuals and to live and thrive in a diverse context at Biola and beyond. Hello, I'm Alicia Miller-Andre, and I serve as the Director of Intercultural Education and Assessment. And I'm Walter Augustine, and I serve as the Director of Intercultural Education and Research. Together, our role is to empower Biola staff with a biblical vision of diversity and inclusion. We do this by providing research, assessment, and professional development opportunities that equip staff with practical intercultural knowledge, attitudes, and skills. One way we equip and empower Biola staff is through the Symphony Learning Track. Offered in conjunction with Human Resources, Symphony is a six-week professional development program centered around developing cultural humility to enhance our capabilities in the workplace. We also offer reading groups and workshops on a breadth of topics from biblical foundations to accessibility. Hello, I'm Glenn Kenoshta, Director of Diversity Education and Training. And I am Leon Harris, Assistant Professor of Theology and Director of Faculty Diversity Initiatives and Wellbeing. Together, we collaborate with faculty to equip, develop, and implement practices in the classroom and curriculum that will enhance the learning environment across the campus. We create resources to promote inclusive pedagogy and enhance diversity of thought in the curriculum. Our vision is a rich, classroom experience in which faculty and students listen to the diversity within our community, learning alongside and from one another. I'm LaVon Scannell, Executive Assistant to Tamara Malone and Program Coordinator. It is my honor to support and enhance Tamara's vision and strategy for biblical diversity at Biola. In addition to supporting the functions of the Division of Diversity and Inclusion, I also collaborate with the team to coordinate the logistics for major campus events such as the annual MLK luncheon and send-off celebration, which is our multicultural graduation celebration. I am so grateful to have a strong team that's able to support students, faculty, and staff to ultimately ensure the flourishing of all members of our community. You know, I believe we have a strong diversity team at Biola and we're building upon our solid, biblically-centered approach as we head into the future. You've often heard me say, we're gonna talk about reconciliation and diversity more, and we are. 
We're not going to talk about it less, but we're going to talk about it more centered on Scripture and not less. We are committed to this now more than ever. And when you treat someone less than what they're worth, you, you ignore the imago Dei, the image of God, equally in all of us. And by doing this, you've committed an injustice. If a certain group of people is being marginalized and overlooked, as Christians, we can't sit idly by and say nothing. Biola's friend, Justin Gibney, points us to the prophet Amos when he came to Israel and he said, look, God is threatening to destroy you. He wasn't just threatening to destroy them because of sexual immorality. He was condemning them because of how they treated the poor and the oppressed. If you go through the prophets, Isaiah, Micah, Amos, you cannot miss the idea that God has an expectation that we will do justice and love kindness and walk humbly. Let's go to Isaiah where, where God looks around and there's injustice and unrighteousness happening and it says that God was appalled. As we all get into the diversity dialogue, we have to be willing to examine ourselves, all of us from all backgrounds. We need to listen without being defensive with a spirit of humility, willing to say, I have learned something I didn't know, something about myself. I was wrong. My group has messed up on that and we can do better. I can do better. A few months ago, I picked up a book written by a great friend of Biola, Dr. John Perkins, whom we honored with the Charles Colson Award for Conviction and Courage just a couple of years ago. And his book is called Dream With Me. And while reading, I was inspired and challenged by this Christian leader who has seen so much racial injustice in his life, including quite recently, I might add. And yet he still has great hope in large part because of young people today who seek justice and reconciliation based on Christ's redemptive work. So, by all community, I would like to ask you to take a moment and dream with me. Imagine a Biola with students coming from around the world, from across this country, from cities, suburbs, rural communities, whole families, broken families, black churches, Asian churches, Hispanic churches, all living and learning together. Each student feeling his or her contribution to the classroom is valued. Students are intentionally listening to one another and being challenged by the scholarship of their fellow classmates and professors. And while doing so, they are strengthened in their faith as they experience the Imago Dei in those around them. Imagine that if racial tensions remain high nationally or regionally, when students come to our campus, they experience a radically different climate. Here they find a place that acknowledges the atrocities of our world and is serious about equipping students with the tools to engage in nuanced conversations about complex issues like racism from a biblical perspective. And not just to think biblically, but to live biblically. Together, let's build a, a faculty and a staff community that supports the university mission by engaging students in hard conversations and relevant topics that prepare them to impact the diverse world for Christ, to, to lead others who don't know Jesus to give their lives to him. I want Biola to become a place known widely, not only for enrolling a diverse student body or more first-generation students, but for being a place that receives all students well, with higher retention and graduation rates. Let's be a place where our world-class faculty are given more opportunities on campus to strengthen their teaching as they engage students from more diverse backgrounds through practical application that enhances the learning environment. I'm inspired to dream of a Biola where the curricular and co-curricular areas work together to inculcate our unity amidst diversity theological statement into everything we do and where students gain a solid foundation of biblical diversity and cultural humility. Where good and godly processes are set in place that will help prepare our staff to serve students from diverse backgrounds and provide equal opportunity in our hiring, supporting managers to help their employees of diverse backgrounds to thrive here. We're moving forward, and it's not going to be easy work, and we may make mistakes along the way, but we must move forward, and we must move forward together. I'm grateful for Tamara Malone, who's here with me now to share a few thoughts from her perspective as well. 
As we reflect upon who we are and who we're striving to be, we know that we need to take advantage of the benefits of diverse learning environment for Biola. Leading in this area of diversity and inclusion, it's challenging. And it's mainly because of the complexity and nuance that's required. Now, experts warn that it's easy to achieve individual diversity initiatives, but without a cohesive, proactive strategy to address the institution as a whole, ultimately, this work will not be successful. It's this guiding principle that helped me ground the work of our institutional diversity strategic plan. I knew that Biola's plan had to touch all areas of the institution, be grounded in data, and be owned not just by my team in the Diversity and Inclusion Division, but also stakeholders from across the university. To create the current strategic plan, I began by synthesizing previous drafts of plans from my predecessors. I researched best practices for diversity strategic plans and reviewed our institutional data. From there, I crafted the plan, which went through a semester-long vetting process with the diversity and inclusion team and a university-wide task force of 25 faculty, staff, and students. Now, this task force prioritized hundreds of recommendations into a cohesive strategy that's comprehensive, concise, and easy to follow. This plan was approved by our Strategic Plan Advisory Board, which consists of the Cabinet, Dr. Scott Ray, and the Diversity Inclusion Team. And after reviewing final recommendations, another task force drafted an assessment plan to ensure that we'll be able to measure the progress we make and the impact on the institution. The 16 initiatives in the strategic plan fall under four goals, embrace, equip, engage, and expand. I will explain these further before each senior leader describes the corresponding initiatives. The first goal we would like to present is embrace. This goal seeks to help our campus to understand and live out biblical diversity. Dr. Scott Ray and Mike Pierce will elaborate on the initiatives under this goal. To embrace biblical diversity, we're taking intentional steps to create a campus community that invites all of us to embrace God's vision of a diverse yet unified people. We plan to do this by integrating our theological statement entitled Unity Amidst Diversity into our general ed classes, Bible courses, and the co-curricular activities. During the fall 2020 orientation, Dr. Corey and Tamara Malone shared their vision of how the biblical value of diversity should be lived out within our student body. Additionally, Tamara introduced the theological statement and provided training to all student leaders. Together, we will build a common understanding of why we are pursuing diversity and inclusion within our university, and we will strive to ground our community in a thorough understanding of this theological statement. We seek to gain a more comprehensive understanding of diversity and inclusion on our campus by assessing and monitoring our campus climate. We plan to do this by utilizing institutional data through partnerships with the Transformation Office, Educational Effectiveness, Student Success, the Office of Student Wellness, and University Analytics. We commit to communicating our progress on an annual basis with the campus community, as well as reporting it on the Diversity and Inclusion website. Second, we plan to intentionally incorporate Biola's ethos of unity amidst diversity into our major university events, such as annual Welcome Week and Commencement. Our desire is for all students, whether they are traditional or post-traditional, undergraduate or graduate, from Los Angeles or anywhere around the world, to feel valued and see themselves represented as part of our campus community. Thank you, Mike. Next, we will hear from Dr. Andre Stevens and Dr. Adam Morris on the second goal of EQUIP. In this goal, we plan to equip Biola employees to enhance business practices and services which support educational excellence for our increasingly diverse student body. Thank you, Tamara. To serve our student body well, we need to assess our institutional practices and amend them as needed to ensure we are being inclusive and equitable. We plan to create a university guidebook for leaders that includes best practices for inclusion and equity in the workplace, guidance for leading diverse teams, and recommendations for reviewing policies and practices to ensure our processes are equitable. This guidebook and a corresponding program 
will be available to academic, administrative, and co-curricular leaders across campus. Second, we plan to create ongoing opportunities for university-wide development in biblical cultural humility for staff, faculty, students, and administration. Currently, the Intercultural Education Committee has drafted a proposal providing recommendations for required student education on cultural humility. A well-qualified, diverse workforce will better equip us to serve an increasingly diverse student body. We plan to review our current hiring practices and provide recommendations to ensure we are doing all we can to be inclusive to applicants from diverse backgrounds. We also know that advancing the strategic diversity initiatives outlined in this plan cannot happen without financial investments from our institution and our donor base. The Division of Diversity and Inclusion and the Office of University Advancement plan to collaborate to develop and expand a sustainable donor base to further these initiatives. We are excited to support diversity initiatives which will lay a firm foundation to see our campus thrive both now and in the future. Thank you, Andre and Adam. Next, Dr. Deborah Taylor will explain the initiatives under the third goal of Engage. At Biola, we seek to engage students in educational opportunities which prepare them to work and serve in an increasingly diverse world. Thank you, Tamara. One of my priorities has been working with leaders in my area to integrate diversity into the academic curriculum. We plan to do this by first defining diversity of thought for our context. In light of the significance of this diversity of thought statement, multiple stakeholders have contributed to the process of developing drafts that would form the basis of this guiding document. Feedback was given by the academic deans, the provost executive council, and the faculty senate. President Corey is currently synthesizing these valuable contributions into a final version to be presented to the board of trustees in May. After board approval is granted, the statement will lay the groundwork for embedding diversity of thought in our required courses. This includes creating concrete learning outcomes, rubrics, and implementation of assessment of our progress. In the meanwhile, the Chief Diversity Officer is working with each member of the Provost Leadership Team to align our vision for diversity and inclusion and to set tangible accountabilities and next steps for each of their schools and departments. These efforts will also be extended into the co-curriculum, working with spiritual development, student wellness, and community life to ensure that the diversity of thought is incorporated into various student learning opportunities and outcomes. We also plan to empower faculty so they feel confident and energized when engaging a classroom of students from across the nation and the world. We are so pleased to have various faculty members consulting with us in the construction of a process that supports faculty development, implementation, and assessment of pedagogical cultural humility and intercultural competence. Currently, faculty are working to create a bi-faculty, four-faculty program, similar to Symphony, the professional development learning track for staff. Lastly, we envision expanding funding and opportunities for faculty to conduct research and scholarship through our Office of Academic Research and Grants to address the intersection of diversity within their areas of disciplinary expertise. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Lee Wilhite will elaborate on our final goal of expand. This goal seeks to expand the accessibility and retention of individuals from diverse backgrounds at all levels of the university. Thanks, Tamara. We want our students to reflect the breadth and the richness of the kingdom of God. And research shows that a diverse student body will enhance learning for all students. Therefore, we plan to apply for the federal designations of Hispanic Serving Institution, or HSI, and the Asian American, Native American, Pacific Islander Serving Institution, or ANAPC, which tangibly demonstrates a commitment to creating an infrastructure which supports students enrolled from diverse backgrounds. This means that we are working on key initiatives, such as developing relationships with local communities, exploring increasing financial aid, increasing transfer pathways, and fostering a more positive co-curricular experience. We also plan to enhance local and global partnerships, 
To do so, we hope to establish and strengthen mutually beneficial relationships with schools and community colleges, community-based organizations, churches, and parachurch ministries, both in our neighborhood and across the globe. To strengthen retention of students from diverse backgrounds, we plan to enhance financial aid opportunities for both incoming and continuing students, as well as bolster retention programming and services. I'm excited to share that this last year we successfully expanded our first-gen orientation to be for all incoming first-gen orientation students, preparing them to transition well before the semester begins. To better retain staff and our faculty, we plan to launch employee resource groups, or ERGs. And lastly, we plan to strengthen relationships and communication with our parents and with alumni. As it relates to diversity-related initiatives, by enriching our assessment and programming and regularly communicating education opportunities and major university progress in this area. Thank you, Lee. And that covers the four goals and 16 initiatives that compose the Institutional Diversity Strategic Plan. While the pandemic has shifted our original timeline, I'm so grateful for the leadership of Dr. Corey and the cabinet who have demonstrated their commitment by continuing to make progress on our strategic plan. You can learn more about our strategic plan by going to our website that's actually launching today. Communication of the progress we're making on the institutional strategic plan is important to me. And at the end of each calendar year, that advisory board will meet to hear a progress report on each initiative and establish the next set of goals for the upcoming year. This will be reported to the Board of Trustees. In addition, our State of Diversity Address will be given annually in January, which will allow us to share the progress and goals with the broader Biola community. The website will also be updated on an annual basis. As you heard today, our Institutional Diversity Strategic Plan is a comprehensive plan which involves departments throughout the university. While it's necessary for us to address our systems and structures, it's also imperative that each individual in our community commits to playing their part in creating God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Whether you're an alumni, parent, staff, faculty, student, or board member, as Christians, we are called to adopt a posture of biblical cultural humility based on Philippians 2, 3 through 5. Here are a few ways you can grow together in cultural humility. First, reflect on your own cultural background and what has shaped the perspectives you have. Secondly, practice seeing the Imago Dei in others by committing to listening to their perspectives and stories with curiosity. Also, empathize with your brothers and sisters in Christ when they're going through a struggle that you may not understand. Now, students, I want to talk directly to you first. Biola is a training ground for your future. So lean into those hard conversations around diversity. Stay committed to relationships with people who have a different background, experience, or beliefs than yourself, and seek opportunities to challenge yourself to grow both on and off campus. Faculty, we know that serving students is the reason why you do what you do. Keep doing that. Center them and their experiences in your classroom by continuing to expand your pedagogical skills through participation in the self-guided faculty course on inclusive pedagogy titled Foundations for Intercultural Awareness and Engagement. Contact your dean to inform them of your interest in supporting diversity and inclusion initiatives within your school to connect also with their greater vision and goals. Lastly, take advantage of the opportunities to personally consult with members of the diversity inclusion team regarding diversity inclusion within your classroom. And finally, volunteer to participate in a pilot launch of the upcoming Symphony for Faculty. Now staff, you keep this institution running. We work on diverse teams and serve so many different constituents from around the world. Pursue your own professional development and cultural humility by attending Symphony and in engaging in workshops that will enhance your professional development. Leaders from across the university, acknowledge and affirm the rich diversity on your team and look for ways to enhance your area. Also, identify barriers that are keeping your team members from contributing or even students from learning and address it head on. Lastly, I want to encourage all of us to pray that God will give us the courage we need to live out our unity amidst diversity. So as we conclude our time together today, 
I'm reminded of one of the most powerful demonstrations of unity amidst diversity, and that is the sacred practice of communion. It's fitting that we close our time by participating in this together. So we wanna invite all of you to join in wherever you are by taking communion with us. As we move toward the future, we do so as one body under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul, he addresses a divided church. It was a divided church. We see some of that today, don't we? And he talks about the importance and significance of communion, communing, being one, gathering together. And he reminds them that communion is a sacred act. And it's, it's a unifying act. And it is. It, the, the, this sacrament is celebrated by God's people around the world in different continents, in different time zones, from different backgrounds and families and languages and cultures and economic status. But this is the one thing that we can do together. Gathering together to remember the sacrifice of Christ for his body. He also states that the communion is the time to like do some self-examining, to look inward at yourself. Because he says, anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on oneself. And finally, it's a, it's a, it's a time of recommitment to the Lord, his work, including living out of unity amidst diversity. You know, with, with the whole idea of communion is mean we've been reconciled with Christ. And because we have been reconciled with Christ, then we, we reconcile with each other. We, we literally, Paul says, we are ministers of reconciliation to each other. And this is what communion calls us to do, remembering Christ's sacrifice to us. And as I said earlier, like, because of that, we just all, brothers and sisters, we just huddle together at the foot of the cross, um, sinners saved by grace. And what a time to recommit to that, the lordship of life and living out unity amidst diversity. Because as often as we do it, we, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So as we take communion, I pray that we are becoming more holy uh, in this process, this process of sanctification as we learn to live together in the community of Biola, um, united by the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And one of the ways we remember to do that is by the act of communion. So I'm going to ask you to just take your communion cup and bread and hear the word of the Lord. First Corinthians says, For I received from the Lord what I also handed to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The word of God says in the same way, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim, Biola, you proclaim my sisters and my brothers, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So let us take and drink. So let me conclude by saying that the future, what is to come and what God has in store for us, it may be hard for us to imagine to see today, especially in this time that we're in. But this shouldn't cause us to be fearful. It should cause us to be hopeful. I've quoted this one verse by the Apostle Paul more than any other verse this past year, where Paul says that suffering leads to perseverance. And perseverance leads to character. And character leads to hope. And that the road from suffering to hope has a couple of way stations along the way. And one of them is learning what it means to persevere. And the refining of your soul as we learn to persevere. And the other is character. God through this valley is building your character. So don't fast pass 
your way from suffering to hope, without allowing God to work in your life through the virtue of perseverance and the building up of character. And this, my brothers and sisters, is quite exciting. And the work we have ahead for us as reconciling people, it may not be easy. But we're just a segment of the larger body of Christ and we need spiritual leaders across the globe to, to pray over us and to pray with us, providing godly wisdom and counsel as we seek to follow the Lord's will in this season. I've actually reached out to uh, a number of friends of Biola's, friends of mine from across the country and around the world and asked them to do just that, to help us close our time together today. Jesus, you prayed an audacious prayer for your disciples in John 17. Father, make them one, even as you and I are one. Please bless Biola University and their institutional diversity strategic plan. Do a work of reconciliation and redemption, of social justice that shows your kingdom to a watching world. I thank you for the great diversity strategic plan that Biola University has produced uh, to position itself to be an effective institution in the coming years. God, I thank you for Biola. I ask God that you watch over the university. I ask that you bless and watch over every leader, every man, every woman. Lord, I pray for Barry Corey and for those who lead Biola and for those who love this community. As they place themselves in your hands as instruments of reconciliation. Give them discernment, give them wisdom, give them understanding so they can move and walk out the call that you have on the university. And Father, would you bless the students as they go out. Father, may they proclaim your name. May they live out the values of the kingdom in the communities where you send them. Would you use Biola University to release leaders that are reconcilers, that are ambassadors of and bridge builders in this broken and divided world. Lord Jesus, may it be so from this place, send out your bridge builders. We thank you, Jesus, that you have broken down the wall, the dividing wall of hostility between Jew and Gentile, slave and free, male and female, black and white, making the two one for your glory. I thank you, Lord, for the leadership of uh, Biola, for the board, the president, the faculty, and the staff. Lord, I pray that you would continue to use this great institution for your great name and uh, continue to bless it. Bless Biola that they may represent Christ's body, including people from every tongue and tribe and nation for your glory. Please answer the prayer of your own son in John 17. May Biola be united in all of their rich and beautiful diversity, even as you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are united in all of your rich and beautiful diversity. Father, we thank you that you have set apart this institution for your kingdom purposes. And Father, we pray that your kingdom values would be reflected on campus in the relationships between leadership and faculty and staff and students, that others might be drawn into your presence because of the life of the kingdom that is manifest on campus. Remind here that when we are weak, then we are strong and help all of us around the world watching here to pray more and criticize less. As a family, Father, we thank you for Biola University and the missionaries and pastors and marketplace leaders that have been sent out for decades. We're so grateful. We thank you, Jesus, that when you said, my Father's house will be called a house of prayer for all nations that you meant it. We echo that prayer in Afrikaans, Alanasis, Salkombet, Beidi Heisfani Father, in Zulu, Bonke Abantu, Bazotandaza, Mzini Gababa. All nations will come and worship together in Jesus' name. 
teach, we ask your church in this great country, the way of humility, of radical love, of relinquishment of power, of relying on your providence and trusting your sovereignty. Protect her from the temptation of a theology of glory and make her cherish, espouse and live out the theology of the cross. We need reconcilers to be mobilized, Father, from this place. People of peace, people that are bridge builders, Father, people with the humility to sit at at the table and to grab arms and hands and just work through difficult conversations. Father, we pray for unity, unity across racial barriers. We pray for unity across economic barriers. Father, for such a time as this. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.